Clinton campaign press secretary Brian Fallon joins me now. Uh, well, if you had one word for your candidate tonight, what would it be? Presidential, steady, disciplined. I think in the debates uh, so far, you've seen them be very meaningful in this campaign. Uh, the separation in terms of the support levels and that you see in the polling really happened after the first debate, and Donald Trump has been in a spiral ever since. I think Americans have had an opportunity to see them up close, and they've judged that Donald Trump doesn't have the temperament to be president. Increasingly, it looks like he's going to bring that scorched earth approach to this final debate, too. Well, how do you balance the kind of message she delivered at the end of the last debate, her demeanor? the ad that you put up today, presidential reaching out to Republicans and independents, the vision thing, if you will, against those who say we want her to punch back, to fight back, to be tougher if he does go after her as hard as, she, as he's signaling tonight. Well, I think it's sort of a tell about the standing of the respective campaigns in terms of the tone that you hear from the two candidates. Hillary Clinton's been positive, uplifting, talking about her vision for the future, which I think is an important thing to do in the closing weeks of the campaign so that you give voters something to vote for, not just something to be against. It'll also be important when it comes to governing, uh, because on the heels of this election, we're still going to have a, a very divided country. Uh, but we do see an opportunity to make an affirmative statement, to not just reject Trumpism in this campaign, but to make an uh, affirmative statement and come together as a country and say that we're not just against Donald Trump, but we actually stand for this and reaffirm some of our core values as Americans. And that might be something that we could build on when it comes to governing. What do you do when Patricia Smith is sitting there? She's a grieving mother. She was a, um, a really angry presence at the Republican National Committee, her, her anger boiling over against Hillary Clinton. She's made it very, very personal. And she's going to be sitting there. The signal from the Trump campaign today, Jason Miller put out a press release. Hillary Clinton, you should apologize to Patricia Smith. What, when, what happens when Donald Trump says, Hillary Clinton, apologize to this woman. She lost her son because of you. Well, she's spoken to this issue many times before. I think she'll approach it the same way tonight, which is to say that, look, these four brave Americans that died, that was a tragedy. Uh, and, and this woman is more than entitled to her grief. And we should all grieve with this woman. Her, her son made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our country. Um, but in terms of the suggestion that there was some wrongdoing on Hillary Clinton's part, that's been the subject of no fewer than nine investigations. Patricia many of Smith them says that Hillary Clinton lied to her, took her hand and lied to her face about the cause of what, what inspired this attack, that's video, been, terrorism, yeah. whatever. That's been independently fact-checked on multiple occasions. It's just not the case. It didn't happen. They did not have a conversation? Oh, they had a conversation. But the idea that she suggested that uh, it was the video and not terrorism is something that's been looked at by multiple fact-checkers. Uh, and it's just been not only uh, debunked by many of those fact checkers, but it was the subject of nine different investigations, many of them led by Republican committee chairman on the House, no friends or allies of Hillary Clinton. And they concluded that there was no wrongdoing there and that the uh, response was everything within the military's capabilities that evening. Why did you suggest to the debate commission, you in the campaign, I should say, not you personally, that there be no handshake between Melania Trump and Bill Clinton tonight, well, families in general? Uh, let's just look back briefly at what happened in the second debate. In the closing minutes before that debate took place, the Trump campaign tried to embark on a stunt where they essentially tried to pull Donald Trump's family members from the family VIP box uh, closely situated to the debate stage in order to orchestrate a stunt. Now, the Presidential uh, Commission on Debate stood up to them and said, you can't do that. The Trump campaign howled and suggested that that somehow showed bias on the part of the Presidential Commission on Debates. But look, so going into tonight, do, uh, does the commission or do we as a campaign want to agree to rules that would facilitate more opportunities for shock tactics and stunts by the Trump campaign as part of their scorched earth policy? Absolutely not. You know, it's unfortunate that we can't at least practice the sort of customs of and expressions of civility that we've come to expect in these debates, but unfortunately Donald Trump has made that impossible. Now, the other thing that's been happening, of course, is WikiLeaks, and there's a one of the emails from Neera Tandon, a Democratic activist at uh, a think tank in Washington and formerly with Clinton World in past campaigns, messaging to John Podesta about how um, we can't get her to stop saying that she's a, a moderate, she's got to be a progressive, you know, the people are howling, I'm paraphrasing here. And this does seem to refer, it doesn't name Hillary Clinton by name, but it does refer to this what Hillary Clinton said five days earlier in Ohio to a women's group. I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. I think sometimes it's important when you're in the elected 
arena, you try to figure out how do you bring people together to get something done. I mean, is that part of the problem, that people don't know who she is, that she doesn't seem authentic? One day she's a moderate, then she gets challenged by Bernie Sanders, and she's suddenly a progressive. The Goldman Sachs speech transcripts show that she concedes, you say, one thing in public, another in private. How does she counteract this? Well, on the WikiLeaks issue, I think it was very striking that in the last 24 hours you've seen even Marco Rubio, a Republican senator from Florida, speak out and say that Republicans should not be trying to use the contents of these uh, unauthorized disclosures from WikiLeaks to exploit them politically because it could very well be Republicans that are on the receiving end of a foreign intrusion. And I think that the, um, a key moment tonight will be whether Donald Trump finally admits and condemns Russia's role in this hack. In the previous two debates, he has refused to even acknowledge their role, even though he's been briefed to that effect by U.S. intelligence authorities. Um, on this issue of this particular email, um, you know, we're still looking at the veracity of these documents because the Russians have a propensity to forge and, and falsify materials. But uh, the issue of her comments that she made over a year ago about uh, moderate is something that was actually addressed, as I recall, in the very first debate that we had uh, uh, here in uh, Las Vegas, and she was asked about it and answered for it by saying, look, I'm a progressive, and a progressive who likes to get things done. And the point that she was making in those comments was about uh, her willingness to work across the aisle to make progress and advance the goals as a progressive. Uh, and that's something that she's going to fearlessly pursue as president. She'll have to work potentially with Republicans to get things done. Uh, that doesn't mean compromising on your progressive principles but it means being practi practical and pragmatic. Does the net effect of the Goldman speech transcripts that have been released by WikiLeaks, stolen emails from Don Podesta, no doubt, and suspected by the FBI of having been engineered by the Russians, but does the net effect of that make it harder for her to govern even within her own party? Is Bernie Sanders holding his fire now? Elizabeth Warren and others, is she going to have a real problem if she's elected dealing with Democrats who don't trust her? No, because just look at the policies she's put forward. I mean, that, the proof is in the pudding in terms of where she stands when it comes to more strictly regulating Wall Street in terms of that she's put forward the most comprehensive plan out there, certainly as compared to Donald Trump when it comes to cracking down and further regulating these big banks, cracking down on the shadow banking industry, uh, tightening the Volcker rule. Uh, she's called for eliminating the carried interest tax loophole. So on one policy issue after another, her position is quite clear. And so there'll be plenty of common cause for her and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders to work together to try to advance the goals of ensuring that we have a fair playing field when it comes to the big Wall Street banks. And two quick other points. Donald Trump says that she's got no stamina, that she's got health problems, maybe she was doping before the other debate, they should take drug tests. She has been off the campaign trail for five days. Is she doing a lot of resting? Is there a problem with her health? No, she's been prepping for the debate. I mean, we have been quite forthright about the fact that she takes these debates seriously. And I think you've seen in the strength of her performances thus far that that prep has counted for a lot. And you've seen in the results of those debates that we've gained this separation over Donald Trump. So maybe Donald Trump was the one that should have been taking more time to uh, take these debates seriously and prep for them. And how concerned is she about these other surprises? Breitbart has now published an interview with a woman from Arkansas, Fort Smith, Arkansas, who said that uh, there was a sexual, three instances of sexual assault, which she claims, from Bill Clinton against her. He was the governor, a first-term governor. She was a journalist. And we have not substantiated this, uh, have not verified it with the accuser, the alleged accuser, but it is published by Breitbart. And, of course, Steve Bannon from Breitbart is helping to run this campaign. So if they're promising surprises, this could be one of the surprises tonight. I don't know any of the circumstances uh, behind those allegations. Uh, I just know that, as you said, that it's been reported by Breitbart. I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Trump uh, seeks to invoke this Breitbart report tonight or in the coming days. We're expecting uh, that he'll do anything in these closing days. He has said that he's essentially practicing a scorched earth approach to this campaign. I think that it might be a successful recipe for rallying the, the roughly 40 percent of the electorate that has been solidly behind him in this campaign, but it's certainly just alienating those remaining persuadable voters that he needs to uh, make this race competitive again. So if he brings this scorched earth approach to the debate stage tonight, I think it'll be his loss. That's what we've seen in terms of the first two debates, certainly. Brian Fallon, thank you very much for the campaign.